This morning I'm lucky enough to sit with Christian Arara yeah. to talk about his range of CLE and asylum cigars that we have in the UK. So, morning. Hey Callie, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. So, obviously a lot of us will be familiar with CLE and asylum. When and how did you break into the UK market with the brands? It's been a long way coming. <laughs> Ever since the, the Camacho days, London has always been that, that, one, that one city. I mean, obviously you, you talk about the UK, but London is always that, that one focus. Yeah, it's different. It's completely different. And it's especially yeah. painful for us because it's the easiest route into Europe usually because yeah. out of Miami is the best flight. So every time we would come into London, you walk to that duty-free store and you always, man, I want to get the cigars in there. Yeah. It's always very complicated. So finally, after 20-something years, we ran into Scott Vines and Tor, uh, your company. Mm -hmm. And I really like what you guys were doing because I, I, I like the focus on these you guys call them call them new world which I, yeah. I hate that term yeah i know yeah all right but i call them the caribbean brand or so i know here, yeah. I, <laughs> but there was there was a really good focus for for brands from countries like ours because there is a story there's a, such a really good story yeah you know there are the same people that had to leave cuba that, that had the industries in cuba the same people that built the, the, these companies in nicaragua and they built them in honduras mm -hmm. you know where my father was the group that went to honduras yeah and uh so we have a story to tell and i think we make really good products as well so i'm glad we're finally able to share some of these products over here in, in london of course the uk at large as well yeah well like you said you know we we do a lot of education behind the brands and the manufacturers and stuff with tour and a lot of the manufacturers we work with originated in Cuba like you said and their families that have sadly had to move and they've found yeah I know yeah Nicaragua and, and all the other places so yeah it's, um, it's really interesting but we like to obviously spread that yeah it's um, you know when you there's only really one way to make a cigar right but the little things that everybody does differently mm -hmm. and the technologies we use are different yeah you know you look at a company you know I'm, I'm already third generation my tobacco barns are different than everybody else's. Yeah. My factory is different than everybody else's. You know, we're, we're solar already. You know, we do uh, unlimited paint from almost all my boxes also. Wow. You know, we're also doing rainwater recovery. We're doing 70,000 trees so a year. sustainability. Yeah, we're yeah. doing a lot of reforestering. Hey, the, the, the wood we're using. And it just makes it a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. The new farms I'm developing now. Mm -hmm. Technology is... Well, zero impact on the environment. So our, the way we view things is just a lot different. You yeah. know, when you go to my, my father's generation, these are guys that left Cuba and they just have to make a living. Yeah. They're, listen, man, we need a piece of land. Mm -hmm. Just give me a piece of land that we can start growing tobacco in. Yeah. And they didn't even care about making cigars. They just, they just need, a, they need to work. Yeah. And uh, so now our focus is a lot more different, a lot more advanced and, and um, technology comes into play a lot too. Of course, yeah. No, it's it good that you mentioned about sustainability because I think that's the focus of a lot of the new world, I'm going to use it, <laughs> brands. But like you said, you can think about it a bit more. It's completely different and you all have your own different sort of methods and things, but you're still using the traditional methods of cigar making. So. Yeah, but it's funny. So, and it's funny how things are different between generations. For example, my father also has has a factory, and he likes to keep a moisture level at X. My moisture level is a different level. Completely different. And we just sit and we just we will never agree. But you taste the products and they're the same. I mean, we did agree on uh, we both have reverse osmosis on the water too. Yeah. We're both 99% hygienic. Because people put cigars in their mouths. No one yeah. ever thinks about yeah, that. Yeah. You know, we, we, we have Bayer Crop Science helped us with a farm, making us very, very green and no products, but they also help the hygiene in our factories too. Mm -hmm. You know, we have doctors in our clinics that we're green also, but wow. uh, we, yeah, we both have doctors at the farm and we have doctors also at the factory. Yeah. Wow. Take care of the workers and, and, and their families as well. Aww. But yeah, if you ever sat in a conversation with my father and me, you, you would think that we disagree on just about everything, and but we don't. Presumably you learned from your father and then I you've did. now decided, oh, what if we tried this? So you've branched out, I guess, in cha just changing it to see? Well, listen, I learned from my father, but you, you begin to question things. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe... You know, maybe this shouldn't be done that way. The way we ferment tobacco is different too. Okay. We have different levels. Does of he ever think, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then you sort of prove him wrong in a way, I guess. That, hey, but that's how it begins. Yeah. But then the problem is when I'm trying to prove him wrong, he just completely ignores it. <laughs> hey, he's 86 right now. What are you going to teach okay, him? Okay, yeah. But that's amazing. 86 and still still doing it, still into it. Oh my it. God, dude. He's, he's making 10-year plans. He's doing all these things. Wow. I really admire 
about him, the one thing, I, I, number one is work ethic, mm -hmm. and, and number two is his, his absolute passion and love for cigar. I mean, yeah. he doesn't think or talk about anything else that's not tobacco, which is frustrating. <laughs> In family reunions, you're like, hey, you know, I don't let's know. Let's talk about work. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Hey, listen, uh, new car, let's look at this new car. <laughs> He says, no, unless it's a tractor, I'm not interested. Oh, you know? wow. Oh, so, uh, so it is frustrating. That is cool. But I learned a lot from it. Now, I, I moved to Honduras. I spent half my time in Honduras now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely in love with the process. I, I absolutely love with, with the process. I have yeah. three boys. I think they're liking the business, too. I was going to say, is it going to follow in the in Yeah, the that, that, that's the dream. Yeah. Not the goal. That's the dream. I really want it to happen that way. Yeah, but like you said, do you say you're third generation? Did you say? I'm third, yeah. It'll be yeah, the, so be the it, it stays within the family. And that's what we like to actually do at Tor. If you speak to Scott, well, you know Scott is that he likes to work with manufacturers that it is very family orientated and there's history and there's stories and there's passion and it's, it makes it so much more like when you sit and smoke the cigar when you learn about the process and people visit your factory like I know Carlos and John came to yours earlier in the year you appreciate the product more than than it just being a, a taste or, a, or a experience yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if, if Scott does it for this reason or if he knows it and I studied that a lot. Listen, I spent a lot of time on airplane rides, so I spent a lot of time thinking and analyzing. The reason our approach is different is because we don't work month to month or quarter to quarter. It's not about, hey man, I'm not the president of XYZ company, I, I want to keep my job. Yeah, yeah. Our, our decisions are, you know, in my, in my company it's a 30 year sunset. Mm -hmm. Whatever decision I make right now has to make sense for us in 30 years. Yeah. So. We did a repackage of CLE, finally, like the third or fourth. They finally, CLE found its identity. Mm -hmm. It took 11 years for that brand to find an, an identity. Yeah. 11, yeah, 11, 12 years, which is fine. Listen, we stumbled a lot. Uh, you know, we asked for a lot from our customers, mm -hmm. and they were patient enough. Yeah. 90% of the 10, 10 is like, listen, screw you, Christian, too much work already. <laughs> no, but they're very patient. So we make these decisions with such a long-term view, view in mind, mm -hmm. because I want, and also, you know, when you build a brand from scratch, you realize, you know, after we sold Camacho, we realized that building a brand is a lot more work than I thought. Yeah. So you want to be very careful because you can, one poor sale, one poor decision, you know, expenses don't break companies, bad decisions break companies or brands too. Yeah. So we have a very long-term view and I think that's what Scott likes. You know, it's Scott or what, that's what he appreciates. And I think most of our us family owned businesses, we think the same. Yeah. We want it, We want things to be steady and normal. If we ever had a brand that grows 500% a year, we don't like that. It's too quick, it's fast, quick. It's too yeah. nervous because it grows 500, that means it, it can drop that quickly too. Yeah. So all these things are scary to us. We like solid and consistent. Mm -hmm. It's. I, I bet you if you sat here with uh, Carlos Fuente and George Padron, they would probably give you the exact same answer. Yeah. They don't like that. You know, right. We like steady. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to quiz you now on CLE. Uh -oh. What is your favorite cigar that you produce? What's your go-to? You know, there's a cigar that that I'm having trouble making. I can only make 30,000 of them a year. It's called the Eidoa Dark. What you do with the Eidoa Dark is, I take the tobacco plant. So tobacco has primings. Mm -hmm. First priming, you leave on the ground. Then you have the second priming. And you take off the bleed. It goes from the bottom to the top. To take those those leaves off, the nutrients keep going to the next leaf. So the third priming has a little more body. Fourth, mm -hmm. and then fifth priming is also called the corona. So if you imagine the flower here and the plants here, it's called the crown. Yeah. It looks like a crown. So um, we make that cigar only from the corona leaves. If you touch this chair, it's like it's thick leather. The tobacco is very very thick. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to cigar. I can't make that many of them, but when I make them, when I get a good batch of tobacco. We do it. We just there's a new farm we started in South America, mm -hmm. and the new batch of tobacco will be ready July 12th. So I go back to Honduras to blend that that batch for this year. And once I get the tobacco, I, if it's 300 pounds of tobacco, whatever it is, because mm -hmm. I don't get that much of that leaf, no. we make the production for the whole year. So this year we'll probably make about 32, 33 thousand of those cigars. And where do they end up going around the the world? Is there like a particular? Uh, it's not a particular region. No. You know, we'll, we'll go and we'll visit somebody, and if I feel that that person really loves and appreciates cigars in, in, in a way that I 
and I think that he or she would appreciate this cigar. I, I, I asked them to please yeah. bring it in. So do you have your own little selection? So if this is your favorite cigar, do you produce them and say, hey, I'm going to take a box in this month? We do, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I started. That's how I started. So is there anything coming up that is completely new for your brands? Or Yes, we have um, something just came out in America. We're trying to get... You know, it's, it's always funny to talk about it because the, the barriers of entry, mm -hmm. you know, if you're inside the business, you understand them, but if, if you're not inside it, you have to understand that to sell in Europe, especially in the UK, is extremely complicated. That's why I really admire companies like, like Tor and anybody else who decides to get into this business. And even the cigar shops here too, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, the amount of work that they have to do just yeah, to sell cigars. Yeah, you have to jump through, Cheese yeah. and crackers, man. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. So. There's one called the Asylum 867, mm -hmm. which is an aromatic line. Okay. And there's also the, the Cool Brew. Those cigars are now just in the US. We're beginning to sell them in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. I don't know when they will be here in, in the UK. I don't know what the registrations have to happen and what the rules are with aromatic cigars. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you start seeing is a new packaging for CLE. Okay. Which I think it's once you seal cigars, you absolutely. See, a cigar is just not the taste of a cigar. It's mm -hmm. the story that it tells and how it makes you feel mm -hmm. when you have it. And when you look at it, what it tastes like to you just by looking at it. Yeah. Now, you're in a restaurant and you order... Well, it's the first thing you do is you, you see nice, it visually first, don't you? Yes, yeah. then you smell it. Yeah. Now, you look at a box, for example, like our Eiroa cigars. We cut the wood the same way, the same day we make the box. So when you open up that box just a little bit and you smell it, wow. you get that cedar smell. Yeah. Which is also why I use that tissue paper. Mm -hmm. I don't like cellophane. I use tissue paper in our yeah. cigars because I want the cigars to marry each other when they're inside the box yeah. and they pick up each other's smell. Well, it's funny you say about visually. Um, I used to work for a retailer and new cigar smokers or novice cigar smokers will walk into a humidor and they scan everything first. They look at the cigar, they look at the band, they look at the whether it's shiny. It's always the first appeal. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that you've done a, a whole sort of re look at it. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Yeah, I was inspired by this one beautiful shop in Switzerland mm -hmm. in the um, House of Grar. And uh, the guy's name is Tarek. He allowed me to go back. I, I visited a shop and I couldn't stop thinking about that shop for like four days, five days. So I called the guy that does my designs out of Honduras. I said, bro, I need you to fly to, to Geneva. Yeah. I called Tarek first, gave me permission. <laughs> and we sat there for a day and a half. Well, yeah. And just sat there and looked at everything, and, and that's where the inspiration came from. Okay. Well, thank you for sitting down with me. I know no, you know, okay, my pleasure. A busy schedule, fun. but I look forward to this. is lovely, by the way. Oh, you like it? A little 40 by 4. Yeah, really enjoying that. Um, I that make was, this for Alexandria for my wife. Yeah, well, that's why I picked it. I thought <laughs> yeah. she's got good taste. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it's, um, it's a pleasure and I look forward to spending a bit more time with your brand this year. All right, Kelly, thank you very much. Thank you.